Hello, I'm Oliver and I'm going to walk you through my Japanese dictionary. This little plane that you see here is proof that everything works offline. First, I'm going to show you the basics. Later on, there will be stuff about language and then advanced search tips. First, the basics. Let's start the app. At launch, it warms up and checks that everything is fine and if it is, you end up on the main search screen. Now you can search for words, kanji, examples or grammar points by typing stuff in the top box. Let's look for wolf, for example. As you can see, the app is quite fast and searches as you type. In the displayed results, Kanji are in blue, words are in green. You also have sentences, examples, in white. And you do have grammar points in purple. If you click on an example, you get inform uh, additional information on the right. For example, here is Kurosaleta, Kurosaleta. Uh, it means uh, have been killed in Japanese and it corresponds to uh, Kurosu, to kill. And uh, you, on the right, you have additional information that helps you understand what it means. Uh, it's very nifty for people who are learning Japanese. It could help you to read a book, for example, like in one an, of my other application. So by clicking on the Japanese part, you move the additional information, but you could also move it by scrolling this list up and down. You also can collapse the additional information. For example, if you think that this is unrelevant, you can collapse it and it will take less uh, screen space or you could expand it. Just click on it. Now you might want to access an addition, a detailed view about uh, the kanji, the words, and the grammar point that you find, that you found. Uh, let's start with the uh, um, grammar points. Uh, on the right list, to access the detail view, you have to do a long click. So let's do it. And here it comes. So here you have the grammar lessons. Uh, here you have the uh, uh, Japanese level. So it's uh, GLPT level 3 Ni for the Nyongo no Ryoku Shikan. Um, you have notes about the grammar point um, and you have examples here. So uh, basic descriptions, some uh, context example. Here you have notes. You have a traditional examples that are highlighted, for example, for the T grammar point. Here you have it. And uh, it's highlighted correspondingly. In, uh, here is Romaji. And here is the English translation. And this T is like a hand in English. So they are highlighted. You have the. Uh, uh, as usual with examples and with Japanese text, you have additional information on the right to help you decipher it. So that was the uh, detailed view for a grammar point. You also have detailed view for uh, kanji, like this one. You only have to do a simple click on the left. Uh, like I did, you see, you don't have to do a uh, on this part, you only have to do a single click to access the detail view for kanji or for words. Uh, there aren't detail view for sentences because when you do a simple click, you just move uh, this background. So let's go back to the detail view of this kanji. 
so you are you do have here uh, the order of its strokes uh, its radical number of strokes its frequency this means that uh, it's not really um, um, the most used of kanjis it's like the 2100 920th most useful kanji um, and uh, it, it means here that uh, it's usually learned by Japanese uh, children uh, at grade 9 here in katakana you have uh, the Han readings the readings of uh, Chinese origins all Han readings are in katakana in this app it helps you learn katakana and it helps you make the difference between Han readings and Kun readings uh, all Kun readings are in hiragana like this one and uh, under you have the meanings so this kanji has only one meaning which is worth uh, under you have some usual facts about this kanji there may be more in the future as I want to expand on this concept so here are words using this kanji you, you can see it here, 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 here here you do have sentences using the kanji little artifacts here will be corrected sometimes later um, so uh, as usual with the sentences uh, they are, there is the usual information on the right uh, it's only in, in the premium apps uh, not in the free app so you must have paid the app to, to get this nifty feature uh, so you have sentences you also have kanji with the same shape and see this shape on this shape you can find it you can find both in this kanji there and there so it might be useful for people who want to test them their kanji knowledge and uh, as I said there will be more queries like these ones in the future I hope I will find useful ones. Let's get back to uh, the search screen and let's try uh, let's try some words. Um, you can see on words that there is some part of speech information like n is for noun and uh, some miscellaneous information in red. Uh, UK it means that uh, it's usually written with kana so it's usually written okami let's click to see what we get there so this is a detailed view for a word uh, that has many way of uh, writing it so this is the most popular one and the least popular one is should be here um, this tells us that it's it's a frequency number it's uh, like uh, 19 uh, multiplied by uh, 500 so it's like in the 10,000 10, most useful numbers this means that uh, it's uh, it's a unu unusual kanji that is um, associated with uh, this uh, irregular sequences uh, these things will be explained uh, more clearly later on when I um, implement it so you do have different meanings um, so part of speech is in uh, yellow and um, miscellaneous information in red you may also have field of application in purple uh, and uh, dialect like uh, Tokyo dialect, uh, Kyoto dialect in blue and you have here the kanji that uses this reading so if you change the reading like this one you get the same meaning but uh, it's not using the kanji so there isn't one and also the queries are updated here there is just one sentence that uses this writing so you can you can
can um, check the reading sometimes they won't have the same meaning so and I think that's it so we have seen all detailed views and this ends the basics even about this app so now let's um, let's start um, what, uh, what you want to, to know about language it's the second part so um, people who are native English speaker are very lucky because in this app there is like uh, 100 uh, 160,000 words that have translation in English now uh, if you are French or Russian you are less lucky because there are much less translations like for French there is around 40,000 translation for words which is quite nice uh, German people and Dutch people are quite lucky because there are a lot of translations too uh, there are, I don't know how many there are for Spanish. It's quite quite large too, but there aren't that many translation for Russian or Portuguese. So what really helps is that you can uh, fall back on other language. You know, for example, um, my native language is French, and I can also speak German and English. So. Um, with this configuration uh, every word would be translated first in French and if there is no translation it would fall back first on German and then on English uh, as I'm much better in English than in German the best conf uh, configuration for me would be this one that way I would get all translation that exist in France and French and if there isn't one it would fall back it would fall back uh, to English and I would understand the meaning of a Japanese word. So let's see what it does for uh, queries. Uh, uh, there are lots of uh, English translation here in English so that means that there isn't a translation in French but as you can see um, here there are some translation for French that use wealth uh, this one is French this one is French this one too also on the right side this is French and uh, when it finds ones it should translate this this is French uh, each time it finds um, French translation it uses first uh, it's quite a nifty feature and I think it may be the only dictionary who does this and this ends the part about language um, So now let's um, let's go to the third part of this uh, walkthrough, and the third part is about advanced searching, because this app has powerful search capabilities. Uh, first, we are going to um, to there are two settings that we haven't used here. Here we are going to uh, use them. This one will, will be quite interesting. The other ones less so. This one is for maybe Japanese people, and this one is for mostly for me or for people who want who are curious about the way translations are chosen. So here you have a scores. Uh, that means that when you have. Um, when you have a, a sentence, the app tries to translate it. It tries to find the best meaning, the best translation. 
and this one has quite a high score it means that it's very likely that this term is has uh, is spelled like this in Iragana. That uh, high score means uh, there are lots of chance chances that the translation is right. This one, for example, uh, ooh. this one is not the best one. The, uh, this one is uh, archaic, so it gets a, a minus five score, and this one is the right one here. Koto uh, is definitely not a, s a string instrument in this sentence. So it tries its, its best and uh, it does it with scores. I mean, the entry that has the best score is, uh, is um, the most um, relevant usually. So let's uh, remove it. And here you have uh, the um, part of skip pitch written in Japanese of this stuff. So this is really interesting for uh, people who are advanced in Japanese or nati native Japanese speaker. Uh, this means that it's a noun, namai, and it's autonomous. This is a, uh, this might be a particle, and uh, it uh, I'm not that good on. Uh, I'm not that good at that that stuff. And if you want, you uh, you may show in English what it means. So there, it's a common noun, a particle, and you have additional information. It here is a suffix classifier. So uh, it's usually off because it doesn't bring that much. To the app. Uh, the cr show query is more interesting because it tells us how the app will uh, guess uh, what to look for. So um, the third part of this workflow is about advanced feature for searching. So let's try to do a search uh, more slowly. Like uh, let's look for love but one chart, one character at a time. Uh, when you tap L, um, it it um, it su suggests it tries to give the relevant su suggestions. So, for example, uh, you could um, click on this suggest suggestions. It gets spaced here, and then you have words that start to L on this. And you get more suggestion, and it it gives relevant results. So the third line is for suggestions here. When you tap L, you could have um, um, it could search in the English meanings or in entities. Um, what do you have in entities? Ooh. Uh, this was not an entity. Bad example. Ah, yes, let's try with num. When you type n, it, um, uh, it may look for words that start with end with these fields. Uh, so this is English translation. This is for um, uh, Japanese words with only kana. This is for Japanese words with kanji. This is for uh, Japanese words that are names. This is for grammar lessons. And this is for part of speech. Uh, and for this, there are uh, interesting suggestions. Uh, for example, if you click on this, you get all uh, you get mo uh, a lot of entries that have this kind of part of speech. So, um, so here are the fields that you can use to search. As you can see, when all are grayed, 
uh, the query that is used use all fields and gets automatically translated to hiragana for the Japanese fields uh, and you can select fields by clicking on it you can select multiple fields and as you can see the, b the fields in blue will be used uh, to build the query um, there you are so um, this is the most inter uh, important things to understand about the way this app creates things when you you just tap what you what you want and uh, if you are unsatisfied by the result because uh, it's too general like here uh, you are um, using uh, a lot of fields uh, if you just want to look for nomu in Japanese sentences you just select the f fields you want so here you have sentences that use no uh, you get sentences in grammar points too in the examples and you have uh, if you only have one or two fields selected you get also suggestions for example there uh, sorry uh, no, you also get suggestions. Um, but for example, if I, oh, if I, mm, that, that might not be suggestion for English. Mm. So by changing the fields, it should usually change the suggestion you have for example for no if you if you select English you have these suggestions if you select Manoi you have these ones if you select Japanese you have this one if you select more than if you select less than two fields you have uh, you may have suggestions of this one and this one but if you select more than two fields uh, oh no no you have um, the reunion, you have uh, suggestions for all these fields. So the more fields you select, the more suggestions you have. Okay. So, suggestions, uh, f sorry. Uh, fields and under its suggestion quite strange application is misbehaving fields suggestion query right no, it's okay. oh, strange um, okay let's uh, see what we can do with this app uh, we can do some pretty complex queries like for example if you are looking for love, as you can see, you don't find uh, the kanji. So you might want to add, for example, uh, love in Japanese. There is a um, hand reading that is high. And if I add this, I get it. So what is done there is that I'm, I'm searching for love and I so when you type multiple terms um, you search it with um, uh, and you could search also with or um, well, it's a kind of boolean operators uh, I think not works also but uh, it's not that really interesting this one works so you are looking for um, fields that have love but that don't have I as a reading. This means that it's required and that you don't want these. So you can do pretty complicated things. Uh, for example, you could add numbers. And numbers are automatically um, uh, 
Uh, the app tries to make sense of it. So one, it could be a GL plate level, a grid level, a stroke count, a frequency, a shape. Uh, yes, a shape. Because if you type on shape, it suggests you the kanji that only have one uh, stroke. If you change your number with 12, it can still be a shape. It can be a stroke count, a frequency, but it can't be a um, GLPT level. So it, it tries to uh, understand what you mean and it tries to do the best it can. Uh, a funny thing you can do with this app is you can create when ranges. For example, if you do this, Yes, I did a mistake. Two must be in uh, upper caps. If you do this, it will give you, as you can see, um, an error. It will try to make sense. So, for example, um, uh, <laughs> it's kind. Um, it will give you uh, too much stuff in there. Uh, all relevant entries that have things between twen uh, 12 and 2000 so you get sentences too but if you only want uh, frequencies it will give you all uh, kanji that have a frequency between 12 and 2000 uh, you can try other stuff like uh, for example for GLPT if you want uh, Two, between 2 and 2000 it's not really interesting for GLPT but for example between 2 and 3 you will get all if you choose to for example GLPT you will get all grammar lessons that have GLPT between 2 and 3 not all because uh, the app doesn't show all it shows like uh, 30 results uh, if uh, I add, uh, for example, uh, this, it will, for example, display all kanji that have a GL, uh, that have this shape and that have uh, a GLPT between two and three. Uh, if you want to uh, add some more um, filters, you can, for example, uh, what could we add? Uh, we could we add another shape if you want. Say for example, uh, uh, these are might not be interesting, but uh, which one? This one. And so this kanji here are the hon only kanji because um, there are only five of them. There are less than thirty. Uh, are all kanji that have a GLPT between uh, 2 and 3 on this shape on this shape mm, looks like there are still bugs in my application <laughs> try to correct this later let's, let's see as you can see, it has a GLPT between 2 and 3, and it has the required shape. Okay, what, what other kind of funny things can you do? You can group things, for example... Uh, you, ca you can ask for things that start with AN. So... Um, the let's try with uh, yes you see see it starts with an let's see with rep for example oh here you have a, a dialect from Kyoto here it starts with an here it starts with an it starts with an you might want to uh, want things that have a han inside so where is it here in French there is a word with uh, hand inside the world. Uh, so uh, this start is um, equal to any any sequence of character. You might want to 
Do this thing. There. I'm going to put English there with this syntax the um, interrogation mark is for one character so in lose uh, this is an S and in love too it's uh, V. Lo uh, it's lovely, loses, loves. Let's try something else. This you see, AP, AP. Uh, what kind of other interesting characters is there? Like uh, this one. It means that. Um, you can have one difference with this word and as you can see here there is just one difference between love and this uh, what can you find? cove just has one difference with this so it's a, a proximity indicator let's try with two might not, not work with two Try with it with a proximity look at one. Is is nearly like it. Is but just have one difference. So there are um, uh, you can do funny things. Uh, it's a bit explained here in the health. Uh, how it works, it tells you what you might want to do with um, this stuff and uh, here is a um, web page uh, with more details about what you can do so you can do pretty amazing stuff with searches Whoa. <laughs> let's uh, Let's stop and uh, I wish you fun and, and pleasure with this app and I wish that uh, you uh, it's uh, I, I wish that it helps you learn Japanese. Goodbye. <laughs>